What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla, Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I want to break down what's going on with the overall market, what economic data is coming out for tomorrow, what you should be watching for all these different tickers going into tomorrow. But before I break anything down about all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I'm firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed five free stocks. This offer ends in just about 12 days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market. Looking at SPY, the overall trend on this thing is looking more bearish now as we have this head and shoulders pattern that is still playing out. And we're starting to see the market just looking weaker as we're breaking down and below some very critical levels. Now, it is possible for the market to try to rebound just a tiny bit tomorrow, but if it does try, it's going to likely eventually fail for another afternoon sell-off. If SPY breaks this 420 area, it's going to turn even weaker and the market is going to likely see even more selling. But for now, we're starting to see some buyers trying to defend 420. That could lead to a small little bounce before we continue selling off. So I just wanted to talk about how that could play out and what's going on with tomorrow. So for tomorrow in particular, we have some data coming out in the morning. 15 minutes after the market opens, we have the S&P Global Composite PMI report coming out, which could lead to some volatility. We also have the ISM Services PMI coming out about 30 minutes after the market opens. So for the first 15 and 30 minutes with all this data coming out, giving us a good understanding of how the current sectors in the economy are doing from services to other factors, that is going to lead to some volatility in my opinion. After that, there's not really much else coming out. We have Schmidt from the Fed giving a speech at about 10.05 a.m. Eastern Time. Then we have Bowman from the Fed giving a speech at 11.25 a.m. Eastern Time. So that's pretty much it for the Fed speakers and the data. There's not a whole lot coming out for tomorrow. Now, when it comes to market seasonality, we tend to see the market, okay, sell off in October. There tends to be another sell off, but it typically doesn't happen until the second half of October. And normally the first half tends to be more bullish before the second half turns bearish. Now, in this case, what happened was the 10 year treasury yield is continuing to climb. The yields are continuing to go up and up and up as we're starting to see other factors such as like silver and like these other commodities gaining some value. The dollar has some strength and so does the VIX and the market is selling off as a result of that. There's also a lot of fear dictating the market right now about the recession potentially coming and other factors like that. The 10 year treasury yield hitting the levels it's at and seeing other yields inverting is another major signal of a recession coming. And that's part of why the market is selling off not to mention the fear incited by other factors. So all of that is causing the market to sell off earlier than how it usually would for the month of October. And the best thing we can do is just watch the trend and see which levels end up breaking. Now, looking uh, forward, I just want to mention that the market right now is very fearful. It's extremely fearful right now when it comes to market volatility as the VIX is well above its 50-day moving average. And all these other indicators are just pretty much fearful from extreme fear to just fear. If you look at like the stock price strength report, it's still looking very, very fearful. And that is dictating the market right now. Even momentum is more fearful. The overall sentiment is extremely greedy. Uh, I'm sorry, extremely fearful. I wish it was greedy. It's very, very fearful right now. But remember, this is the time to be greedy during times like this. Now, this is one of the opportunities to be buying in the markets, but remember, there could still be more downside, so even more buying opportunities are coming, in my opinion. Not financial advice, by the way, but the market is extremely fearful. Fear is still driving this market, and we're continuing to see fear, once again, get the best out of the price action. So how are things looking on SPY? Let's break this down now. We have this head and shoulders like pattern that has developed, and this is playing out quite nicely. Right. We still have this right shoulder right here that's just playing out very nicely. We have this channel that's leading to more downside. Now, we had this historical support trend line, which connects us from the October low down here to this low from right, right up here. So I had this green trend line. You guys can see it like right here, this green line, which was our key support. And for the first time in the last few months, we actually broke the support line, which was very, very huge. This is a very, very big sign of weakness. And now we're just barely holding 420. Now, looking at the current trend, I just want to mention that SPY established a bullish divergence as soon as we hit this 420 area. We actually have a small bullish divergence, which tells me that there's going to be an attempt to rebound just a little bit before this thing continues to sell off. Now, I'm going to be looking for maybe like a gap up or just a tiny little bounce attempt by the market, which is going to likely end up failing. And I believe that 
we're eventually going to end up breaking 420 and going down to 418.5. That seems like a very, very good uh, measured move for tomorrow. But I believe that first off, we might see an attempt, some kind of attempt to rebound a little bit looking at this little wick right here. Uh, I find it very probable it's just going to either like retest 423, maybe trying to get very close to this trend line, the back test of it before we tend to break down. That's typically what happens during sell offs. When we break very, very key levels, we get like a back test or come very close to doing so. So that could lead to something like this where we kind of like gap up a little bit. We either have a very, very small attempt to try to get back up here where we fail, and then we just continue selling off as the day goes on, coming back down to this 418.5 level. And something like this is still very possible, right? So I think that's the most probable move for tomorrow. But if we end up gapping below like 420, then we're, we're going to be very weak and we're going to be expecting 418 pretty quickly. I'm not leaning in that direction. I think we might just gap up and drop, but I'm always going to be open-minded nonetheless. If we end up gapping below 420, it's going to be very bearish. Either way, whether we gap up and, and sell off or if we just gap down and sell off, we're still looking bearish overall. But I do believe the most probable move is, is going to be that like, attempt for a rebound off this level a little bit gap of before we continue selling now for tesla tesla is looking very mixed but it's starting to look weaker than before what do i mean by that well on the four hour chart okay on the four hour chart we have this developing we have a possible inverse head and shoulders that's attempting to rebound but at the same time when you zoom out we also have a much larger head and shoulders that looks like it's trying to play out so you can see we have this left shoulder here on tesla we have a head up here and then we have a right shoulder developing on tesla as well this is somewhat slanted and this could lead to more downside especially if we break our neckline now when it comes to tesla i just want to call out that we have a very critical level that's developing right here so we have this slanted head and shoulders i want to actually delete these two lines because we don't really need them anymore uh, we just have these levels to be watching for as Tesla is getting tighter and tighter. But if we are bullish on Tesla, let's just say Tesla outperform the market, outperforms the markets. If we have this inverse head and shoulders play out, you want to see Tesla break above 254, and it's looking very unlikely now. It looks more like Tesla is going to eventually break down. However, here's the thing. However, if we end up breaking this support right here, this green trend line of support, which is a historical support. That would turn more bearish for Tesla, and this thing will likely start to break down towards 238 or into the 230s. Also, that happens to align with this, uh, this, this head and shoulders, which would be a lot more probable of playing out. It would be a lot stronger if that ends up being the case. So what do I think Tesla will do? Well, if we're bullish, you want to see it break above this white trend line, start pushing above 250. If you're bearish, you want to see it break below 245 and retest 242.5. If that breaks and hits, it hits 240, it's going to likely favor the bears a lot more and the head and shoulders will play out. What's more likely, though, is we might get a little rebound first. We might make an attempt to retest this like uh, 249 to 248 area, like, kind of like this. We'll see if we can try to get close to 250. I'm not too sure about that. And it might just end up failing and we might just see Tesla get very tight. And then we might see Tesla end up breaking down like this eventually to form that right shoulder. And that could be like a completion of this like right shoulder, not, not a completion, but just like the start of it really forming. And it's getting that confirmation of it playing out. That seems like the most probable move for me. Uh, it might gap up and try to bounce tomorrow, but overall it's looking weaker. And that could be very big for the markets because the whole market could be the thing that's dragging Tesla down. What about NVIDIA? How is NVIDIA looking? To me, same thing as Tesla. Looking a little weaker, uh, we have this very, very strong uptrend that's been playing out quite nicely. But the problem with NVIDIA is we had a very bearish looking candle for today. So we also have the gap all the way down at these lower levels. It's not showing here. I can actually show you this on this chart right here. So if you look at NVIDIA, we have a gap down in the, I believe it's in the 430 area. I think it's a little bit lower. Uh, there's a gap down here, basically, which I believe NVIDIA is going to be filling, taking it all the way down to 432. I think we're likely going to fill that gap for more downside. Before the gap fills, there's going to be an attempt to bounce, though. That could still happen with the market, seeing how oversold it's been. So th there could be a back test of this, like, 440 or 442 area. Then we might just reject out here, forming like, kind of like a head and shoulders, and then continue to solve towards this tr trend line around this 430 area. And we're going to be watching, can NVIDIA hold the trend line or not? If it holds this, there could be an attempt for it to try to hold up. If it breaks below this trend line right here, we could see NVIDIA heading towards 425 very soon. But I do believe it's going to test 430 soon, get a little rebound first before it continues selling off. And overall, it's looking a little bit weaker, despite the fact that it's been on a slight 
uptrend. It's been outperforming the market to some extent, but now it's looking a little bit weaker after today. So watch for a little bit re a little bit of a rebound before it continues selling. Apple's looking kind of in the middle, not too strong, but not extremely weak either. Uh, Apple has made an attempt to rebound a bit, but it's kind of stuck in this uh, falling wedge-like pattern. Now, it's it's a giant falling wedge, which I see it being in, and I believe that Apple's attempting to try to rebound, but it's looking a little weaker. So if Apple managed to get up, to get, get above, um, sorry, uh, 174, if you manage to pull that off, there's going to be a nice attempt for it to try to get back above this 174 area to fill this gap at 176. If we fail to hold 174, Apple has potential to come right back down into this falling wedge and continue to fall towards 170. In my opinion, it looks like Apple's going to try to rebound a little bit, maybe get a back test of this area and start failing and just start continuing selling off as the days go on and make its way back down to the 169 area to 167. So I find that very probable for Apple because it's still looking weaker and the trend is still making lower highs and lower lows. So I do believe there's going to be an attempt to rebound before it attempts to continue to break down. I find that very probable and I think that's the most likely move. For the QQQ, I'm seeing the same thing going on with it because on the QQQ, we have this uh, overall formation. We have this nice head and shoulders on the QQQ as well. And the QQQ is basically going to be testing this really critical support right here, very close to 353. So with the current trend and the bullish divergence, or not, not really a bullish divergence, but an attempt to rebound, I think that we could see this thing kind of, you know, push up towards this 357 area tomorrow and it might end up just failing falling on its face and just continuing to sell off towards this trend line we're going to be watching to see if the qqq breaks this or not if it breaks it could be sinking towards 350 if it holds it could just hold around this level for now but if anything it's looking a little bit weaker it looks like downside could be imminent looking at nvidia and the other tickers out there all right so now i just want to break down a couple of other tickers and try to be a little quicker from this part on if you look at sofi for example it is also looking a bit weaker. If we look at the four hour time frame, we're about to get a bearish crossover, and it looks like it's about to break this low. We could be watching for 6.5 very soon if it breaks below seven. Now, I'm going to be looking for a rebound towards 7.45 at first before a potential rejection, and that could lead us to more downside as time goes on. For the IWM, the Russell 2000, we could be retesting 172, reject off that, then continue selling off towards 168. That seems very probable. It's looking very bearish right now. It looks like it's going to see more downside. Look for a little back to the 172 before another rejection and more potential downside. For another stock out there, such as Microsoft, we attempted to rebound and we ended up failing right here. We were trying to get back to this 200. We just got a very, very bearish looking candle. Look for a back test of like 314 for another rejection and it looks to me like it's going to test 309 very soon i find that very probable so look for a little bounce before it sells off more 309 looks like it's on the table looking at amd this is also looking weaker we got a bearish cross on the ppo we attempted to rebound and ended up failing so we're going to be watching this retest 100 if that fails us this imbalance down here towards this 97.5 97.8 area is going to be tested so watch this imbalance right here this zone right here this is where it's likely going to be heading towards this 97 area so i believe it's going to be testing 97.8 very soon for ford this is looking more bearish I mean, it's just on a straight up sell off, hasn't really rebounded much. There is some support at 12. I could see it making an attempt to rebound towards like 12.25 before it could potentially just projecting and making its way down to 11.8. The VIX has been up about 12%. Um, it has a bearish divergence, so I'm expecting maybe a rejection, a small little rejection on the VIX on the four hour. It might just cool off a little bit towards 18.8. You need the market may gap up or just attempt to rebound just a little bit, but then the VIX could establish a higher low again and start pushing even higher, which means that the market could still sell off. That tells us that the stock market might rebound a little bit, just a tiny bit, and then start selling off more as time goes on. The VIX is still on a strong uptrend. This bearish divergence could lead to a small little sell off on the VIX before it ends up bouncing. That's something worth noting. The dollar index also happens to have a similar formation. We're actually starting to reject off this 107.35 area. This thing could retrace. If it breaks below 107, we could see a retracement towards 106.67 before it bounces. So watch that very carefully. We will see if that ends up being the case. Coinbase is also looking weaker. Unfortunately, it's on a big sell-off right now. We have a potential head and shoulders forming. Can we watch this thing approach the 69 area very soon as it looks more bearish? Google has attempted to 
Try to rebound, but now it's looking weaker. If it breaks below 132.65, we're going to be watching this thing come all the way down to 131 flat. So we're going to be watching this very carefully. It looks a little bit more bearish looking at this trend. So I do believe it's going to break 132 quite soon and at the very low 130s. The 10 year treasury yield was at 48. Uh, it's very, very overbought, but it doesn't matter as it's continuing to soar. We're going to, be, we're going to be watching does it break above this 48 level or not? On the weekly, it looks very strong, continuing to break out. So this is another bearish signal for the markets that there's more downside still coming, in my opinion. Amazon likely is going to try to rebound too. Uh, it's, it looks very weak on the four hours. So watch for a back test of like 25.9 before it continues to sell off towards 123. And once 123 breaks, I see this thing continuing to sell off towards 122.5, then even lower 120s. Meta is looking weak too. And barely held 300 for today. We're going to be watching this thing attempt to, you know, retest 302.5, reject off that potentially, and then that could lead to a sell off towards 299. If 299 fails us, we're going to be watching this thing continue to sell off towards this 295 area. So watch that very carefully. But if anything, it looks weaker. So watch it very carefully. And I do believe a small little rebound followed by more downside seems more probable. All right. So with that said, I just want to thank you all so much for listening. Hopefully this video was very helpful for all the people out there. The market may make an attempt to rebound before selling off a lot more. And I believe there's going to be more selling coming for the later days of the week. Now, 420 is a very key level on SPY. We're going to be watching to see if this holds or not. If we end up, you know, gapping below that, so there could be a lot more selling immediately. But it's TA suggests that there might be a little bounce first before we continue to sell off below that later on. All right, so that's what I'm seeing first, a little rebound before the market starts selling off more aggressively. There's likely going to be more downside nonetheless, but I just wanted to call this out for you for now. Hopefully this video was helpful. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next one. Thank you and peace out.